All right, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. All right, so I got a great comment question here from Pulling Down Strongholds 5650. He says, thank you and your righteous steerings of anger and frustration are shared and understood. This is exactly the battle that the Holy Spirit seems to be stirring up in his true people right now. It is to me an evidence for of for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 19. The one verse that they seem to cling to after the flesh is but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Revelation 20 verse 5. If you could do an in-depth on that, one such as you did here might be very helpful. Grace to you in Christ Jesus. Okay, so thank you for that comment and question. And so that's what we're going to do today. I, and so I, uh, I did a, a search for Revelation 20 verse 5 in YouTube. Uh, give me this is the first one and so just going over this um, gentleman here Brian Wolf Mueller alright so this is a guy that's utterly confused um, and again he's in my opinion he's got no business teaching the Bible when you don't understand what the Bible says you ought not be teaching it really and so he's in just utter confusion all right, so that he's got this card here resurrection death second resurrection second death and he he um, he calls it a riddle of two resurrections and I'm gonna tell you there's only one resurrection all right now um, what we're gonna do what I'm gonna try to show you is what's the error and then what's the truth I'll try to make this quick and simple. So before we get into what's true, we're going to uh, identify an error, okay? Key then is this first resurrection, and how do we participate in the first resurrection? What is it? And for that, I want to turn to Romans chapter 6, where Paul says, Therefore we are buried with him, Jesus. All right, so he's going to be quoting from the New King James Version which is not a New King James Bible at all. All right, so this is to me is this like a or like a red flag, if you will, or a sign that says, "Hey, I don't believe in any Bible anywhere on earth at all." All right, because you cannot believe the New King James Version is the perfect pure Word of God, because it's not. And so I just want to throw that out there. So nobody gets confused here. Jesus, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Th this is the this is the first resurrection. Okay. All right. So far. So far, so good. This is the first resurrection. Okay. So far, so good. Your baptism. Wrong. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, people, I just wonder, are people really just stupid? And, yeah. Yeah, they uh, they are. I mean, I am. Uh, we all are, right? But this is, this is incredible, man. You're supposed to be a preacher of God, and you're this stupid, so stupid that you're falsely teaching. Now, of course, this shouldn't be a surprise because it's exactly what Jesus said was going to happen. As we get closer and closer to the end of the world, there are going to be deceivers waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It says actually... Um, uh, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Our baptism is not the first resurrection. All right, that's just stupid. And I think, uh, again, this is directly correlated with the fact that this guy is uh, 
quoting the New King James Bible, or the, I'm sorry, the New King James Version. It's not the Bible at all. The King James Bible is the Bible. The NKJV is a version. It's a perversion. And there's a train coming. And you better watch out. All right, so. All right, so you gotta love that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna get into this. Let's honk that horn, boys. There we go. Let's do it a couple more times. Why not? Let's have a little fun. No? Well, I guess that's it. All right, so. He says the baptism, our baptism, is the first resurrection. He, it's like he's insane or something. He, why don't you just come out and say Jesus Christ is nobody? He's worthless. He died in vain, and he resurrected in vain. Everything that Jesus Christ ever done was in vain. Why not just say that? I mean, if our baptism is the first resurrection, then obviously what Jesus did doesn't matter and okay so the point I was making before Mr. Train Guy came along is that when you don't believe in a perfect Bible when you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God you're gonna you're gonna be blinded it's even today when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil is taken away this is a spiritual thing if you don't have faith in the Bible you're not gonna be able to see it and when you read from the ESV the NIV the NASB the NKJV you're not believing that this is the words of God you're lacking faith. If you do not believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God, you're lacking faith. And this guy, he doesn't believe the Bible that he holds in his hand. He can't. Nobody in their right mind would say that NKJV is the perfect pure word of God. Nobody. Alright. And so therefore, because he does not have faith, he is not going to be able to see and this is evidence right here when he says that the first resurrection is our baptism when you actually read Romans chapter 6 verse 5 it says for we I'm sorry for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall also in the likeness we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection his resurrection not our resurrection and, and to somehow say that this is saying that baptism is the first resurrection is utterly insane it's stupid and you got no business at all teaching the Bible you really don't I mean, this is the kind of stuff that irritates the hell out of me. And when we get a comment like this, that my steerings of anger and frustration, it's because this is, you know, this goes beyond just being confused, not, not being very knowledgeable. This, is, this crosses over that line into telling an outright lie. The first resurrection is not our baptism. The, Jesus is the first resurrection. I, there shouldn't be any doubt about that, really, because this is very clear. Let's go to John chapter 11. Jesus said, okay, let's go to Martha. Martha says unto him, Jesus, I know that he shall rise again, talking about a brother in the resurrection at the last day All right, so everybody knows everybody knows everybody knows that there's coming a resurrection at the end of the world everybody knows it Jesus said unto her I 
am the resurrection. <laughs> so whose resurrection is this? It's his resurrection, Jesus. I am the resurrection. There's a resurrection coming at the end of the world. It's Jesus. I am the resurrection. Therefore, he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. He's from everlasting and to everlasting. He is the resurrection because he has resurrected so also will we all resurrect some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt all right so there shouldn't be any mistake about it jesus christ is the first resurrection all right and so let's go back to revelation 20 but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Who is the first resurrection? Jesus. He is the first resurrection. And even Martha knows. Even Martha knew that there will be a resurrection at the end of the world. And here we have the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. Therefore, we can conclu uh, conclude that the, at the end of the thousand years, it's the end of the world. All right. It, it almost seems too obvious. It almost seems too obvious. Martha knows that the resurrection is at the last day. Revelation 20. And they lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So, there's no other way to look at this. At the end of the thousand years is the end of the world. Now read verse Six. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Go back to John. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, or believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. It's as obvious as all can be. That, I mean, really, Jesus is... The resurrection we are partakers of his of his resurrection Romans 6 verse 5 his resurrection it's not baptism it's not baptism at all Jesus Christ laid down his life not for you know, for the sins of the world not for ours only but for the sins of the whole world. Let's see if I can find something to support that. First John chapter two verse two, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And of course, if we went to Daniel chapter twelve verse two. There's a confirmation here that many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Martha knew it. Everybody knows it. That when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. All right, everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. And Jesus even says that men's hearts will be failing them for fear for looking upon the things 
that are coming upon the earth. Everybody's going to, I mean, people, the whole world's going to mourn when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's going to be obvious that it's the end of the world. All right? So, at the end of the world has to be at the end of the thousand years. Right now, we have to, it, this has to be talking about us. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Do you, right now, have part in the first resurrection, which is Jesus Christ? Yes. If you are born of the Spirit of God, yes. If you're not saved, no. Does the second death have any power over you? If you are saved, the second death has no power over you. If you're not saved right now, then the second death awaits for you, really. But if you are saved right now, the second death has no power over you. If you are saved right now, you are sealed, saved, secured, sanctified forever. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. We shall never die. The second death has no power over us. Those of us that are born of God. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Right now we are priests of God and of Christ. Right now. And this is blatantly obvious. It's incredible, really. In Exodus 19, verse 6, it says, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right, in First Peter chapter two, what's it say? I wonder. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. Ye are a royal priesthood right now. We are called to preach the gospel. To every creature. All right, we are preachers of God right now. Revelation chapter 1. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Right now we are kings and priests unto God. Right now. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them. We are the kings of God right now. We are God has made us kings. We are royalty. We are a royal priesthood. We are royalty. We are the elect of God right now. And judgment has that judgment has already been given to us. And that judgment is eternal life, everlasting life that can never change. We are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever that can never ever change verse 5 but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished so logically speaking at the end of the thousand years is the end of the world and what happens at the end of the world all right the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible all right, so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so this was at the end of the world, at the last trump. It's the end of the world. All right, so let's go to Matthew 24 again. Jesus is asked, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Alright. And so the trumpet shall sound. 
and with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect this is at the end of the world what is the end of the world well that's when the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken this is when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him and what's it say here and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn this is the end of the world and when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven this is the last trump right the great sound of the trump great sound of the trumpet all right all right right here at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible there should be no mistaken about it at the end of the thousand years is the end of the world all right there shouldn't be any mistake about him so what happens at the end of the world that's when Satan is loosed out of his prison now uh, you know I've talked about this quite a bit but if you understand that before Jesus came along that there was one country of God and outside of that country was the nations deceived by Satan all right so now here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believeth in him whoever or whosoever believes in him all right so the kingdom of God is now available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ so it's not just one country of God and outside of that country are the nations deceived but now the kingdom of God is available all around the world. Therefore, because the nation of God is available all around the world, Satan is bound. He is, he is um, bound during this time. Okay. For the thousand years, Satan is bound. Alright, now, at the end of the thousand years, when we are raised up when we are lifted up in the air All right, let's go back here when we are lifted up caught up together with them in the clouds right there it is right there at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then are we caught up together with the saved in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord alright so when this happens we're up in the air and who is left down on the earth it's the unsaved isn't it so now we're it's like it was before Jesus came along and made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. Now, the outside of the kingdom of God, which is, we're all gathered at this point. We're all gathered into one spot, if you will, up in the air. Now, all the unsaved are still on the earth. So, therefore, Satan can once again deceive the nations like he did before because there's no saved people down there it's just all the unsaved and therefore Satan is able to gather them together he's able to deceive them and gather them that's the whole purpose of Satan being loosed is to go out and deceive the nations and to bring them all together to gather them to battle and they will compass the camp of the saints about so this is when we're up in the air and they're going to be at our feet right and this goes back to genesis 3 
verse 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In Psalm 110, for example, it says that, Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And then, of course, we go back to 1 Corinthians 15, and we can see that he, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. All right, this corresponds every, with everything that we ever read in the Bible about the end of the world. All right, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We're up in the air with the Lord. Our enemy is at our feet. All right, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, so in Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. This is when we're up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet. All right, and then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right, this is a fulfillment of a prophecy written clear back in Genesis. And the Bible is consistent all the way through. All right, and it, you'll notice another thing that, I seem, that seems to be pretty popular to me is all these so-called preachers, they want to ignore verse 11. Verse 11 is a description of our Lord Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. Of course, if you don't understand the first 10 verses, you're not going to understand that one either. All right. So, to go back to verse 5, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. All right. This is the first resurrection. You, to understand this, it's very simple. Jesus is the first resurrection. He laid down his life. Now we that are born of God, we follow him. All right, he, Jesus has led the way. So we're going to follow him. We are partakers of his resurrection. Therefore, at the end of the world, we're going to follow him. Just as he resurrected, so also are we going to resurrect from the dead. Alright, so our body will die, but we will never die. I remember what we read in John chapter 11. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. The thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. We are partakers of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other resurrection. It's his and his only he is the resurrection Jesus flatly plainly says I am the resurrection all right and so there shouldn't be any mistake about it every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming he is the resurrection Jesus Christ is the only resurrection and when it's the end of the world everybody's gonna follow him uh, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt because Jesus was resurrected we will all be resurrected all right and uh, so he's led the way he's led the way for all of us the saved and the unsaved alike he has led the way oh, all right I mean it's pretty simple there's no greater man on earth than the Lord Jesus Christ there's no other man uh, there's no other name 
under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved it's Jesus it's Jesus it's Jesus it's always been about Jesus and what he has done for us all right so hopefully uh, somebody might learn something from this I it's very simple really um, this idea that these guys want to present all right so if we could go back here real quickly um, do you think that the rest of the dead that uh, let's see or does it okay so let me read the question here what is your explanation of the first resurrection in Revelation 20 verse 5 do you think that the rest of the dead that do not come to life until the thousand years are ended are non-believers that have died or does it include believers that have died but were not martyred alright so this is the problem here alright so here we have those that were beheaded now think about that question All right. does it also include believers that have died but were not martyred <laughs> right, so the idea is that for a thousand years there are going to be only people that were beheaded that, that's the only way you could present that question that's the idea that's in your head okay I'm gonna encourage you to think about this and this is really not complicated believers that have died but were not martyred this implies or suggests that only those that were martyred live for a thousand years only those with their head cut off live for a thousand years people with their heads cut off roaming the earth for a thousand years this is why I call it the zombie doctrine All right, and it's confusing the hell out of people and it's not confusing it's not complicated what we're reading here in Revelation 20 is consistent with everything we've read from the beginning of the book all the way to the end there's nothing new being presented here it's given us some pretty interesting insight uh, some details another angle to look at things but it's not a, a standalone chapter it's not a standalone teaching at all this is supported by the whole entire Bible the key to understanding this is faith it's really that simple all right so anyways if you guys have any more great questions any more comments if you want me to go over this again let's say I didn't do a very good job I, mean, I probably didn't I can go over it again all right any suggestions thoughts questions anything any insight whatsoever always appreciate it 